Hey lovely people of earth, I'm Kimoni Hall and welcome to my channel Holly and This Together where we do baking videos, decorating tutorials, lifestyle vlogs, gluten free recipes and just about anything that relates to my life that I think is interesting enough to post on the internet. So if you guys want to see how I made this edible fondant flamingo and also pineapple to be added to this Hawaiian tropical themed cake which is right here then keep on watching. Okay, so the first thing I did was to color my fondant in a light pink color. Um, I used some shortening to make sure that it was smooth and I also added a little bit of tallow powder to make sure that it would dry very firm. So I'm just trying to get it smooth into a ball and I kind of turned it into like an egg shape while tapering both ends as you can see here. I'm also making sure that I have a lot of extra fondant at the front end because that will be used to make that super long neck um, and the head part of the flamingo. I made sure that the tip of that long neck was also a little bit bigger because you know I needed it to be long enough um, and I needed to ensure that I could extend that length if I wanted to. So it's always easier to cut off, but it's super hard to try and add on and make it seamless. So based on the size of the body of the flamingo, I kind of just played around with it and figured out where I wanted to cut off for the head part. Um, so I'm just putting it together. It's still very pliable and so it wasn't hard for me to try and figure that out. Just use the fondant tool. You can use a sharp paring knife or anything like that to cut off the excess if you do have excess. Okay, so I just mixed some ivory colored fondant and I added some tiles powder for stability as you can see here. And this will be for the first half of the flamingo beak. So uh, here I'm trying to get it into like a conical shape. Now I'm repeating that same process with a little bit of black fondant as this black fondant will rest at the end of the beak. Now using a small balling tool, I'm just adding a little bit of an indentation and thinning out the edges of that black fondant and I'm using a bit of water to attach it to the white so that it will seem like one seamless black and white conical shaped beak. So that's that. So that's what it's looking like and I'm going to repeat the process on the white end which will attach to the head part of the flamingo. Thinning that out, adding some water as glue and I'm just going to stick it on there, try and smooth it out as best as possible. Now I'm just using my fondant drizzling tool to kind of blend that white into the pink and now for that headpiece, I just literally took a piece of scrap fondant and I added that on and I'm using water and my finger to kind of blend it to make sure that it's seamless. I'm using a combination of my finger and the drizzling tool to get that shape that I need and I'm just cutting off any excess so that it doesn't seem bumpy in certain areas as you can see here so that you can have one seamless shape. Um, so that's pretty much it. I'm just playing around with it, trying to get the look that I want. And then of course, adding the line that makes it a beak. Um, yeah, now I'm just going to add in the eyes.
So I'm just using my phone and tools to add a bit of feather texture to different parts of the flamingo. So I drew those two deep lines. Um, they're more like a cut than you know, an indentation. And I'm adding some strokes to give it some texture. And I'm also going to do that all over the body and at the end of that body where the feather gathers. Um, it won't show much now, but it will definitely show when I add some highlights to the flamingo at the end. Okay, so for the legs, I'm using the same ivory color that I used for the beak and I'm going to use a, a skewer as the support system for this. Um, I tried using a lollipop stick but it was going to be too short and I needed to have enough support going through the flamingo for the leg and also enough extension to go through the cake and so I just rolled a piece of fondant over the skewer and that's me checking to make sure that it wouldn't poke through the top of the flamingo. I used the pointy end to create that hole and then I flipped it and put that stick right in um, and I added that, I don't know what it is, it looks like a skin tag but I guess it's where the knee would bend. Um, so I added that for the second leg however, there's zero support, it's just attached to that um, straight leg and adding some more details with feather and I just allowed that to dry in my dehydrator until it was completely set and firm um, and now I'm just dusting some shadows and shades and details which will pick up a lot better because I have those grooves that I added before um, so I'm just randomly placing them in the grooves trying to get it darker in certain areas and blend it in other areas and for this I'm using a dry brush and I'm also using edible petal dust so that's what that looks like I also added some brown in the beak area to define that separation between the beak and I'm adding a few shades on the legs as well And now we're on to the pineapple, which is pretty simple to be honest. So I colored some fun and yellow and I'm creating that shape that I want, kind of like an oval shape. So I'm just playing around with the fondant until I get that and I have this pineapple mold. So I just put it on there, press it out a bit and there we have it. So I'm fixing the shape because it's a little smushed and I'm adding that impression on the sides as well. Okay, so if you don't have this pineapple mold, you can still create this. Um, in a simpler way it won't look exactly the same but created that shape and I'm using a straight edge to create that diagonal I'm using my scissors and just clipping the middle to get that detail and then I'm just using a toothpick or you can use a fondant tool to add some holes and some other details throughout defining those lines and that's pretty much it 
Okay, so for that top part of the pineapple, I just colored some fondant in green. Um, I'm creating that rough shape, and then I'm just going to use my scissors to get that, like some rough leaves. And I'm just trying to get the idea of what I want, and then I'm using my finger to kind of flatten them out. Um, using my scissors and my finger, trying to get you know that rough shape. I'm not trying to get it too detailed. This is not supposed to be like super hyper realistic. I inserted some lollipop stick just to be like support system. Added some edible glue and I'm just adding some more details using my fun and tool. Adding some veins in those leaves. Um, yeah. And then I'm adding some extra like short leaves at the base where that stem part. I don't know what it's called, the crown, where the crown of the pineapple attaches to the pineapple itself. So I kind of just went to town and did it roughly because I didn't want it to be too uniformed. Um, yeah, and now these are the luster dusts that I'll be using to add colors and shades to the pineapple. So I'm using yellow, orange, green, and a little brown. And I'm just mixing and going to town, to be honest. I'm not really going off of any reference picture or anything, I just wanted it to have a pop of life. And so that's what I'm doing. Okay, so now it's just time to assemble the cake and so I'm just using a combination of toothpicks, skewers, lollipop stick and buttercream to attach the different elements to this cake. Also, I created these leaves and some other flowers, tropical flowers, which will be in the upload for next week so stay tuned. Subscribe if you haven't already, turn on your post notification bell so that you know when I post that video. That's pretty much it. This is the end result. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Check us out on social media if you're interested in our posts and our content. And we'll see you next time. Until then, stay golden.